Hello and welcome back to the Dividend Experiment, the channel that can help you build a sustainable dividend portfolio. The content that will be discussed is intended for information and educational purposes only and should not be considered investment advice or investment recommendation. In today's video we're going to address the latest company on the Is It Time To Buy series. Remember if you want a company to be submitted to the Is It Time To Buy series and be the next video made then you can add it to the list on the post in the members area if you click on that join button down there next to the subscribe. The reason I made it members only submission is just because of the number of requests and it wasn't fair that I couldn't have time to make all of them so now it's on a priority submission basis. But videos will always be available for everyone to watch on the channel. As always these videos aren't a recommendation to carry out any activity whether buy, sell or hold but I'm just giving my thoughts and can serve as a basis to do your own due diligence. In today's video we're going to take a deeper look at Unilever PLC, ticker symbol ULVR, listed on the London Stock Exchange. It's a UK listed company this time around, so the good news is that if you buy this there's none of those nasty fees or withholding taxes. So what type of company is Unilever? Unilever PLC operates as a fast moving consumer goods company in Asia, Africa, the Middle East, Turkey, Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, the Americas and Europe. It operates through beauty and personal care, foods and refreshment, and home care segments. The beauty and personal care segment provides skin care and hair care products, deodorants, and skin cleansing products under the Axe, Clear, Dove, uh, Lifebuoy, Lux, Pons, Rexona, Signal, Suave, Sunsilk, Tresemme, and Vaseline brands. The foods and refreshment segment offers ice cream, soup, bouillons, seasonings, mayonnaise, ketchups, and tea categories under the Ben & Jerry's, Breyers, Brook Bond, Hart, Walls, uh, Hellman's, Knorr, Lipton, Magnum, The Vegetarian Butcher, and Unilever Food Solutions brands. The home care segment provides fabric solutions and home care and hygiene products under the SIF, Omo, Persil, Domestos, 7th Generation, and Sunlight brands. Unilever PLC was incorporated in 1894, and is based in London in the United Kingdom. In the snapshot, here are the key dividend facts about the company. At the time of making this video, the shares of Unilever PLC were trading at about £42.70 per share. Unilever's dividend is currently at 3.43%, which is higher than the bottom 25% of dividend payers in the UK, which is 1.29%. It pays quarterly, which is quite a rarity for UK listed companies, so that's a positive, and Unilever has a high debt to equity ratio of 144%. In my opinion, Unilever can kind of be seen as an emerging markets play, as it's roughly 60% of its revenue is derived from emerging markets. Now we've seen what the company does, its dividend information snapshot, let's check out the new rules of the dividend experiment and see if the company is a good fit for the dividend experiment. If you're not familiar with the rules, then I've adjusted them to coincide with the channel relaunch and they can be found at one of the early videos in this is it time to buy a series playlist? If I remember, I'll also do a card direct to the video at the top right hand corner of this video. Ok, let's go through the rules. Rule number one, the company pays a dividend or is likely to pay in the immediate term. As mentioned in the snapshot, Unilever currently pays a dividend and is quite a rarity amongst UK stocks in that it pays quarterly. If you are thinking of buying Unilever for the dividend, then it's quite bad timing in that regard, as the ex-dividend dates are usually February, May, August and October or November timing and the payments come the following month. This means that by buying now you'll need to wait a bit before the next dividend comes in but not to worry as we're investing for the long term anyway. On the video about the rules I mentioned looking for a yield somewhere in the 3 to 8% range for stocks and Unilever just about scrapes in the bottom of this range as its current yield is at 3.4% roughly. To justify having a dividend that low we should see what else this company can offer. Rule number 2 the company is a natural dividend payer judging from its industry or business model. Unilever has an incredibly diverse line of products and is classified as being in the consumer defensive sector. For those not familiar with consumer goods, they can be split into two sectors, consumer cyclical and consumer defensive. Cyclicals are exactly that, they are much more volatile as they go up and down with the market as consumer tastes will change over the course of a year or longer time period. Take for example a luxury product like Ferrari, ticker symbol RACE, R-A-C-E, which I think is one of the best ticker symbols around. And in periods when the economy is going well, people are more likely to buy Ferraris as their wealth increases. And if the cycle starts to trend downward, consumers may end up deciding to put off buying something expensive like a Ferrari. Consumer defensive stocks are much more predictable as these products you're likely to need no matter what the economy is doing. Think of the type of products that uh, Unilever sells. 
There may be some cyclicality with how much customers buy or the commodity pricing will affect the cost of production, but the revenue should be relatively predictable. Anyway, in regards to these two sectors, I'm sure which one you can imagine is more likely to be a natural dividend payer. And that's not to say that consumer cyclicals don't pay dividends, as I think even Ferrari might pay out a dividend, but I feel like one of the mistakes that I learned from the early days of the dividend experiment is to put too much faith and trust into consumer cyclical yields, as they're just simply not as reliable as consumer defensive sector stocks. I'll go into more detail on this in another video, however. Rule number three, the company should be a top player in its industry. My favorite place to check market concentration is Guru Focus, as it lays out neatly in a pie format, and we can see in the image that I'll load up now. Unilever is almost 60% of consumer packaged goods in the UK and Ireland, which demonstrates the power of this huge company. Next biggest in the sector is Reckitt Benkiser, which has a comparably smaller 24.2% of the market, which would almost class it as a working monopoly itself. One thing this doesn't show so well is Unilever's reach to countries outside of its domestic area, but Unilever Nigeria and Unilever India, or Hindustan Unilever as they call it, are both subsidiaries which can give some clue about the markets it participates in abroad. Unilever is a company that would be hard to argue is not a top player in its industry. In their first quarter report of 2021, Unilever stated that its emerging markets activity had been a significant driver of growth. In China, there had been a strong recovery of consumer demand, as China got out of the pandemic relatively quickly. India has suffered from spiking COVID cases, but still has strong growth in demand. In Southeast Asian markets, they're too heavily impacted by the lack of tourism, and that kind of passes on to consumer demand in general, whilst in Turkey there's been strong volume-led double-digit growth across all divisions, which is really great news for Unilever. Unilever is dominant in its home turf, and growing overseas too. So Unilever passes rule three of the dividend experiment. Rule number four, aim to buy the company at a historically great price. In terms of PE ratio, Unilever are doing relatively okay. Not great, but certainly not bad. Unilever is a good value based on its PE ratio at 23.3 compared to European personal products industry average, which is at 24.1. And it's also a good value based on its PE ratio compared to the UK market as a whole, which is at 25.7. Looking at another measure, the five year average dividend yield, Unilever looks a bit more reasonably priced. Its five year average yield is 3.08, while it's now paying uh, 3.48. So it appears that Unilever is either a better price than it's been historically, or has increased its dividends substantially, both of which are positive indicators for the dividend experiment portfolio. That being said, however, Unilever is overvalued based on its price to book ratio at 8.5 times, compared to the British personal products industry average at three times. Book value valuations carry less weighting than the previous two valuation measures, in my opinion, anyway, but that's significantly higher than this industry, so it's something to consider. I would say that Unilever is creating a decent price, but buying now you aren't exactly getting a rock bottom bargain or anything like that. Neither is it really overvalued. Rule number five, the company is growing and innovating as it matures. Once you get to the size of Unilever, it's difficult to grow and innovation can get difficult if you have to manage 160,000 employees over 190 countries. With that in mind, here are the ways management are proposing the potential innovation within the company. From an earlier investor presentation, Unilever has been successful in cultivating a significant presence in developing markets. Currently, the firm derives 59% of revenue from emerging markets, with a heavy focus in Asia and Latin America. In Asia, India accounted for 9% of turnover, while China and Indonesia both contributed 5% each. In the first quarter of 2019, emerging markets led the firm's sales growth by posting a 5% increase of the previous year, compared to essentially flat sales in developed markets. Increasing market share is probably the most logical route to growth for a company such as this, but what about innovation? In Unilever's investor presentation for 2021, innovation is mentioned as a key focus for operational excellence, but then is barely mentioned throughout the rest of the presentation, other than being kind of touched on in certain product sectors, but it's always very vague and not very specific as to what the innovation entails. In their 2020 annual report, it's a similar story, however they do give a bit more detail, and Unilever says that it will try to innovate by improving the health of the planet, improving people's health, confidence and well-being, contributing to a fairer, more socially inclusive world, and trying to win with differentiated science and technology. And these are all just things that sound good, but don't really give much in the way of substance. 
Overall, I'm not convinced by their innovation plans without seeing something more specific. I think that Unilever is more of a company that will grow as emerging markets develop, rather than creating anything particularly innovative or exciting itself. For that reason, I don't particularly foresee any sudden jumps in share price, but that's to be expected really, considering its share price history and market beta of only 0.13. Rule 6. The company is a sustainable dividend payer. First thing to look at for this rule is the payout ratio. Unilever's payout ratio is pretty high at 76.83%. That however is forecast to decrease going forward as Unilever's dividends in 3 years are forecast to be covered by earnings at a 66.7% payout ratio. Not an amazing level of security, especially with a dividend yield on the lower end, but it's still pretty safe if you consider its history, which we cover next in rule number 7. Rule number 7, the company has a history of dividends. Unilever has a track record of paying dividends for over 25 years and has shown its commitment to its shareholders through this. Total dividends paid in 2018 was 4.1 billion euros and that has increased by 100 million euros each year since then. The board's decision to maintain the dividend as part of Unilever's multi-stakeholder response to COVID-19 was very welcomed by shareholders. Rule number 8, the company must have a strong moat. Morningstar, which is the kind of moat analysis company it seems like, as they're obsessed with moats over on their website, describe Unilever as having a wide moat. I would imagine a significant reason for this is the company is so large it benefits from substantial economies of scale. Cost of doing business is lower when you can buy in such bulk quantities, and their logistics network will be difficult for small players to overcome. Fixed management costs can be spread over a greater amount of output, and the list goes on like that. The number of brands that Unilever owns is quite incredible too. If you go to your bathroom or kitchen cupboard in pretty much any country in the world, you can probably find something that's owned by Unilever. In one small example, if you wanted an ice cream, anything made by Walls, Magnum, Cornetto and even Ben & Jerry's would all be sending your money straight to Unilever. Brand power and loyalty supports increased pricing and helps boost margins. Some of the extra profit is then reinvested into next year's marketing budget, keeping this virtuous circle spinning. There may be a threat to this with smaller brands trying to carve out niche markets for themselves, but Unilever can compete on price while the small brands have to compete on non-price differentials. Summary and verdict. Okay, we've gone through the actionable rules for Unilever PLC. What do I think? Is it a buy, a sell or a hold right now? I'm going to say that it's a decent buy or a hold. Nothing here indicates that it would be a good time to sell particularly, but then it's not an incredible bargain price, nor are there any specific catalysts that would make me think they'll shoot up in price. There has been some insider selling, but that was roughly a year ago and a higher price than Unilever's uh, selling at right now. Since then, there's only been insider buying at lower prices than it's trading at, so overall this isn't such a warning flag as it may initially appear. Personally, I'm thinking of buying a small amount of Unilever in the dividend experiment portfolio in the next week or so as it fits my aims of being incredibly low volatility, regular and sustainable payments, and a sort of proxy for an emerging markets ETF in a sense. I will update you guys if and when I confirm that however. What do you think of Unilever? Its slow and steady growth is not one for everyone for sure, but perhaps it suits your investing style. Leave your comments and thoughts below, I actually really like to see what you guys think. If you think the dividend experiment is interesting, I need you to do four things. First, hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can stay informed for every video and update. I'll be making a whole range of videos that should help you on your journey to build a sustainable dividend portfolio. Second, use the link in the description to head over to eToro, see how the experiment is going right now live and you can even join along if you like too. Third, if you're a new investor, I highly recommend the Dividend Academy. Completely free to join, gives you bite-sized lessons to get started investing, with none of that nonsense that others try and sell you for sky-high fees. Finally, open up a brokerage and get started building a sustainable dividend portfolio. I have some that I recommend in the description and some will even give you a free share just to start you off. Thanks for watching, hope to see you on the next video. See ya.